this is five. Okay. Put this written down. One number five. That's how you keep track of it. You got a little uh, gardening record, huh? I do. I have a little gardening record. I wrote down, because I planted six kinds of cantaloupe, yeah. musk melons. They're not true cantaloupes, but that's what we've always called them. And so some didn't come up. So I'm trying to replant the ones that didn't come up. You got that yeah, little menu there. You have uh, what you're going to make your husband when those cantaloupes come up. What are you going to do with them? Fresh. Fresh. Raw. Raw. Okay. Good. Maybe smoothies. What about watermelons? Maybe a smoothie? Yeah, maybe a smoothie too with those. Maybe we'll just eat the watermelon. They're so good. Maybe a fruit salad. Maybe. Maybe you won't give me anything. Maybe I'll eat it all. <laughs> Dear Father in Heaven, please help me now as I share a thought. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the heat here is just sweltering. It's been a hot day today. But you know, God wants us to be healthy. Even in the heat wave, He wants us to enjoy good health. There's a verse I read in the Bible. It's in the third letter of John. There's only one chapter. It's verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things. That's a wish list, right? Things that, that John is wishing for. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So there's a, uh, there's a connection between the body and the soul, the spirit, the mind, and the body. And God desires that we be healthy, all three. We just have a unified good health. You know, in Colossians 1.17, it says, By Him, Christ, all things consist. He's the glue that holds this fearfully and wonderfully made body together. So, it's plain that God wants us to enjoy good health and to be happy. I remember I was really crazy when I was back in the military, back in the Army. I, I had no interest in health whatsoever. But one day I was reading a magazine, I think I was in a dentist office or something, but it had some magazine, I read an article that butter was not healthy. It was a saturated fat, not very healthy. And I'm 19 years old, you know, and I stopped eating butter. I got a thousand bad habits, doing all kinds of things that are destroying my health, but I'm not eating butter. But as I look back, I see there was something inside me that was desiring to be a little healthier. And then you flash forward, you know, 10 years or so, 15 years and I went to a Wildwood Hospital, took my wife there as a patient, Darlene, had a nice experience. So she was pregnant, child died, but I met these people. They were engaged in what uh, I, I learned was health ministry and I was interested. Darlene and I had become vegetarians. We were kind of getting interested in doing things naturally. We were making our own, uh, we had beehives, kind of making our own honey. We were cooking from scratch. Uh, was, the transition was slow. With the alcohol, the booze, we were making uh, our own beer and wine at home, no bisulfates, no preservatives. <laughs> so I know we, were, we were making progress, but it was very slow. But God is very patient with us. And so we were making some steps toward health and Wildwood was a place of health. And as it turned out, the Lord was leading. We joined the staff there and began to learn about, you know, preventive medicine, lifestyle medicine. Learned about what the gastrointestinal system was, some physiology, anatomy, coronary blockages, what they are, how you can prevent them, how you can stop at a halt to them, how you can reverse them. Diabetes and osteoporosis and arthritis, just soaking it in like a sponge. And as it turned out, a lot of the things that I was eating, my lifestyle wasn't very good. And started making some changes. And as I made these changes, and I would go and visit my, my dear old mother, uh, I wouldn't eat her food. Darlene and I started bringing our own food to my mom's house. And uh, we would take it in, put it on the table, we'd eat it. Now, my mother witnessed me becoming a Christian, and I guess this was the fruit of my Christian experience as far as she could see. And then unexpectedly, we got an invitation to go and start a health ministry in the Philippines, which is in Southeast Asia. I got there, and it was a real challenge. The language, I couldn't speak the language. I uh, didn't really understand how to eat the food. You know, there was jackfruit and all these different fruits I'd never seen before in these foods. Uh, the transportation, uh, jeepneys and these tricycles. It's like these uh, little Honda 125s that would carry five, ten people. And the market, going into the market and buying food. It was just, it was new experience after new experience after new experience. 
But finally, after we were there a time, got ready to engage in health ministry. So I was working with an organization that was geared toward health and invited Darlene and me to work in this area up in the mountains. It was called Batahone. I think that meant hard rock. And so we, uh, we, we accepted the assignment, went up there, and there were like 25, 30,000 people, didn't have electricity. There was uh, not a lot of transportation up there, no running water. And so we would go up there in the daytime, walk up in the morning, spend the day there, walk down the mountain in the evening, and we'd do uh, health consultations, do blood pressure checks, talk about lifestyle diseases. But the first time it happened, you know, we were going to go uh, like, uh, I almost said house to house, but it was really hut to hut. And here's, by the way, a, a typical breakfast we had. I don't know if you can tell what that is, but that's uh, as papaya. I think Darlene was finding a way to get some whole wheat, making some whole grain bread. And we were getting used to, you know, getting used to things, getting to know some people. Here's the kitchen where uh, they made breakfast. It was a different world. And so our first missionary assignment, you know, mine was just full of knowledge I'd gained at Wildwood Hospital. Our first missionary assignment, we went to approach this little hut. Now I learned enough of the language to say, good morning, my name is Lou Keith, I'm from Wildwood Hospital, here to do free health consultations, Libre free. And then generally speaking, what would happen is people would invite us in. The lady that was translating, her name was Kathleen, she had her little guitar, she would sing some songs, we would talk about health, maybe study the Bible, had just nice fellowship up there. But we were up in the mountain, this is the first time, and there was a house, a little bamboo hut, and as I approached it, and Darlene, our translator Kathleen and me, as we made our approach, three, two, three little children ran out, and when they saw me, because I'm six feet five, in the Philippines the folks are very short, when they saw me, the children screamed and ran for the woods. Of course, over there they call it the boondocks. And then the mom ran out, she saw me, she screamed and ran also. And the, uh, our, our translator, Kathleen, ran after them and said, you know, come on back, they're nice folks, they're from a hospital here to do health work. And we came back, we went in, and we sat down in this bamboo uh, hut, uh, bamboo bench, I'm sorry. And as we began to speak to this lady, she looked at her son, raised her eyebrows. I guess that was an indicator to him that he should go outside and fetch something. Out he went. I almost said the back door, but there was no door. And I could see him out the window, but there was no window, just openings. And I could see him going up the coconut tree. And then I heard boom, 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 three coconuts hitting the ground. He went down, he gathered the coconuts up. And he uh, came around the back, and then the mother motioned that she had to be, would be back in one minute. She went out, and what they do, over there they call it buco. They cut the top out of the coconut, and you can drink the water, and then you scrape out the inside, and then that's like a, a meal in itself. So she went out, she got the coconuts, came back in, and offered one to Kathleen, Darlene, and me. And she kind of looked at me, and then her, uh, her, her communication to me was... I'm sorry, I wish I had more to offer, but this is all I've got. And as she handed it to me, my mind went back to Wildwood, and I had learned that the gastrointestinal system needs time to rest between meals. And as she handed me the coconut, I could see there was food value in there, and if I drank that, that would start my digestion, you know, all over again. And then I looked at her. And I think God really spoke to my heart in that, on that isolated mountain in the south of these islands in the Philippines. And he said to me, that lady's heart is more important than your belly. And I drank the coconut water. And as I thought about these biblical stories, you know, John the Baptist, he, he was on a good diet, right? The locust is like in Turkey. You have the, the locust pods, it's like carob, it's really good for you, full of uh, minerals and vitamins, phytochemicals. John the Baptist was healthy. He had this old prophet's dress, you know, big old leather belt and uh, his big, big old uh, prophet's robe. <laughs> he, he was dressed to, uh, to prophesy. And he's living in the country. In Luke 180, he said he was in the, in the wilderness until, until he's showing forth unto Israel. He was out there in the country, you know, dressing like a prophet, eating like a prophet. He was a healthy man out there in the sunshine, the fresh air. I'm sure he was drinking some nice water out of the springs there in the desert. But you know, he got locked up in Herod's dungeon. 
because he told Herod, you know, what you're doing with uh, Herodias, your brother's wife, it's not right. God gave him his parents, Elizabeth and Zacharias. He, they, he gave him a message, you know, take care of your boy. You got to move him out to the country. You got to feed him right. He'd be filled with the spirit from birth. But, you know, once the Lord called John to this healthy lifestyle, right? This is lifestyle medicine. Prevention is better than cure. Once he called him out there, he got to a point in John's life. He'd been asked to give up the bad things, and now the Lord asked him to give up all the good things. In Herod's dungeon, there was no sunshine. There was no fresh air. There was no locusts and honey. And it was a very difficult life for John until they finally took his head off. Even Jesus on Calvary. You know, not a healthy situation to be nailed to a tree. I'm reminded of Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, and then it says, living sacrifice. You need to be willing to sacrifice your health in order to save a soul. That's health ministry. That's the Gospel Commission. That's the spiritual nature of health. So my dear friends, may God give us yeah, knowledge, of course, May He give us wisdom to rightly apply that knowledge that we be not educated fools. God bless you, my friends. You have a nice day. That's uh, one more. That's all the steps. <laughs>